Hi, wonderful listeners. We are tuning into humanity on this fantastic inaugural episode of the incredible year at the Rodeo, that's the Rotary Club of Devnar, Chembur, Mumbai, India. When we get on air to bring you, watch out, not individuals, we bring you the angels, the amazing Rotarians of this fantastic Rotary Club called as the Rodeos. This is Rodeo Suresh Ben on this exciting human radio rodeo alongside the podcast expert, the radio friend, Yus Bhatia, the podcaster on a mission to reach out to the beliefs and convictions behind the noble voices. Yus, hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, great Suresh. Uh, on this exciting radio rodeo show, I'm so excited to be a media for an evening message of humanness and the uniqueness of fascinating rodeos to reach out and touch the heart across the globe. Fantastic. It's incredible, right? So on behalf of the president of this fantastic club called the Incredible Year, Sangeeta Shani, we are going live on air right now. And whom do I see? I saw this very, very reclusive, cool and calm. And listeners, you can't see any of them. But I have the fortune along with you to see these fantastic angels. You can hear their voices. I have the pleasure of introducing Rotarian Narendra Kalra, chartered accountant, 26 years at the club, founder and player of the Chembur CA Study Circle, president of the Chembur Colony, Yuva Mandal, running the RTT Kadani School for the differently able, the hearing impaired kids, a trustee in Remu Kalani Mandal. Girls College, it's a pleasure and a honor to have you, sir, on this radio rodeo. Thank you, Suresh. Thank you, sir. And we move on to this uh, personification of sweetness. None other than Dr. Rotarian Sweet Amit Shankar Chawla, homeopathic physician, MD in homeopathy, the postgraduate in preventive health from Apollo Hospitals, diploma in palliative care, 39 years in practice, the Rotarian. Since 96 or 27 years, he is absolutely committed to the NGOs, Spandan Institute for the last 30 years, Chembur Arya Samaj for 20 years, a honorary physician there at the Chembur Arya Samaj, an acupuncturist and a lifestyle consultant. A pleasure and a honor and a privilege, Dr. Chandra, to have you on the show. Thank you, for this. Superb, sir. Thank you. I go on and I'm going to get this name. I have to thank Mr. Fonster. This time I'm going to get it right. Jason JC. I got it right, Jason. Yeah. Thank you. So here is this guy, Charm Accounting, five years rodeo. And you know what? Listen to this. Alumni of Harvard Business School, someone who takes his diploma in sports sciences, speaker on so many seminars on subjects of finance and leadership. He's got his company which is into different financial verticals. And this is where I stay away from him because he's also a fraud detector. <laughs> so I don't want him to catch on me, I'm going to keep away because he's a very able thought detector. All of that. Are you for real, Jason? Thank you, Suresh, for the wonderful introduction. I feel uh, privileged to be part of this inaugural edition of uh, Radio Rodeo. Thank you, Jason. Really appreciate this. And we now go to these very perplexed looking, uh, all of seven feet gentlemen. So here is Shanmukha Vaidyanathan, the Shan of the Broadway Club of Devnar. He's been somebody who graduated from kindergarten to the graduation here. He was a road tractor for eight years, 1988 onwards, and for the last 13 years, he's been a road leader into the club. An electronic engineer, as a graduate from the I am Lucknow, 25 years in sales, marketing, building, business strategies, especially the healthcare domain in US and India. He's been a quintessential sales guy who is not somebody who pushes. But some of you create a pull. This means every time the man to go to for in everything that we do at the club, every time consulting firm called Morphalaxis. I got it right, sir. Thank you. I do well. It's transformation of family health business organizations for growth and modernization. That's what the company says. Welcome on board this wonderful show, Shah. Suresh. Thank you, Suresh. Uh, glad to be here. So, thank you, Shah. Yes, Piyush. Yes, sir. You are excited? Yeah, I'm excited, but uh, I think uh, you missed out. Uh, the listeners are very eager to know that uh, this Rotary Club, where is it located? Wow, wow. I feel like missing out the hello, right? Rotary Club of Devnar, Chembur, Mumbai, in this fantastic country called India. Yeah. That's where we come from, the Rotary Club. Right, Piyush? Yeah. Good to go? Good to go. Very distinguished. Are you feeling nervous? Uh, no, I'm feeling excited. Yeah, I'm feeling, feeling like unreal. You know what? 
the angels are sitting in front of us. You all yours. Okay. So, so uh, we'll start with uh, uh, Karnaji. Karnaji, would you like to share uh, about your experiences uh, in Rotary in short? I joined Rotary in 1987. And since then, there are a lot of we made a lot of friendship around there because that fellowship is the main pillar of the Rotary meetings and all. And I enjoyed being part of Rotary member Rotary organization. While doing the fellowship, we were also carrying out the various projects that you did. There are so many various projects for the less fortunate people, students, and handicapped students. Yeah. yeah, I enjoyed every part of it. Which one stands out, sir? Which project did you feel, really feel in? Close uh, your eyes. I was, I was president during the year 2000 2001, where I took up the main project as a uh, high camp. <coughs> every month there was one high camp, and during uh, my entire period of 12 months, I, we did about 650 cataract operations. And we went to various schools and did the high checkup for our students. We covered around 6,000 students in the temple area. In a single year? In a single year, yes. So many visions corrected in one single year. Correct. Right. Absolutely. Really phenomenal stuff. Yeah. Anything else that you feel you can really uh, inspire? Because these are Selfless services keeps on happening. Yeah, the the our Rotary Club is undertaking polio corrective surgery, surgeries, burns, operations, and heart operations with uh, Reliance, with the help of Reliance, and so many other medical projects. We are proud of it. Thank you so much, uh, Kalraji, for really giving that perspective and really focusing on different aspects of uh, human upliftment and care and all of that. Really appreciate it. When you said what you said, it really opened up that the realness of the entire project came up in front of us when you explained right from the IPA to the heart to the skin care and all of that. We really could relive those uh, moments and we feel that this is something that we should keep on going on. Doing yes, it. I agree with you. We should keep on going on this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. It was really, really heartwarming, right? Yeah, absolutely. So let's listen in from uh, Dr. Shankar Chawla about his uh, project in Rotary. Okay, let's listen in from Dr. Shankar Chawla about his favorite project in Rodeo or a couple of projects and his experiences. Thank you, Piyush, and thank you, Suresh. Um, so being in a healthcare. So I would relate the projects which are covered, you know, by our club. So I'm going to say that in early, I think late 90s and early 20s, there was huge pandemic of HIV and AIDS, you know. So our club decided to have a project on that because that is the only thing that we can do is to prevent HIV and AIDS. And we had a challenge that, you know, with, and especially Maharashtra, you know, Karnataka, Andhra, were the con I mean, states which were in India were the most affected. So, what we did was we had to have somebody from the government to help us. So, we, we had a, a collaboration with MTAC, we had a collaboration with KM, and we had a collaboration with local NGO. And uh, we got trained and then we started a van. When in the sense it's a bus, it's a full flight bus in the slums of uh, Gavandi. This Gavandi area, I mean, if I'm talking about 20, 23 years back, when it was really slums, and uh, we had, we were there in the projects and we participated in the project. So the project project team consists of the homeopathic doctors and uh, one, I mean, we had a counselor, trained counselor, and one psychologist and a social worker. So what happened when the van was delivered to us and the huge, you know, HIV, AIDS was written and we were supposed to screen the high risk patients, you know, the high risk population so that we can identify and prevent them. So the big challenge came is nobody wants to enter into that uh, bus. Now this bus has what, you know, inside the bus there are two cabins, 
which is good for examination and for you know having a counseling session. And we had a small, uh, I mean, another uh, I mean, table for removing the blood and other things. But nobody enters, and we homeopaths were just sitting there and doing nothing. So a, a one week passed, you know. So we decided let's do something else. So we started an homeopathic OPD, free homeopathic OPD, and we covered the HIA and you know started with the general practice that if you have a cough, cold, if you have any chronic disease. So what happened? The ladies, the children started pouring in, and along with that, we got the spouses, you know, coming in. So during that particular phase, we broke that ice, you know, and that's how you could see that we were able to screen gradually. We found a good rapport. Within three to six weeks, there we were able to penetrate the right way to, I mean, give them the understanding to prevent, how to prevent HIV, AIDS and identify. Identify in the sense early, try to see asymptomatic. Now they were not so happy with their, uh, I mean, doing the blood test. So there was a counsellor who used to, you know, guide and give. So if you look at the HIV and AIDS in today, it's far less, far less. And in those days, the antivirals were very expensive, very, very expensive, and they were newer drugs. Now, today we know HIV and antivirals has worked wonders for these uh, populations. So, the message is that if you make the right effort for preventing such a disease which is really very, very drastic in terms of individual and family, and the only prevention is available to you. So, this project became so successful that we were there for one and a half year and then we continued for two more years in the same area and we could succeed in identifying so many of them with HIV. Fantastic, Samit. It's like, uh, what do I say? Chat, in terms of service, when Dr. Chawla narrated the entire journey, what came across to me was collaboration with government, with NGOs, the mission with a purpose, a strategy of when you said that you went into non-HIV, went into normal care in terms of opening an OPD and all of that. So many aspects go behind getting into the mission of charity. Right? It's not about having only a mission or a purpose or a passion. It's important to strategize and really implement to really reach the down problem. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. I would like to add, you know, so, if I tell you the conditions that we work with, it's first stinking because we are working in the dumping ground, real dumping ground, stinking. Second, we have so big flies, you know, which were biting us. So, initially I didn't know. So, first day I went with my half shirt and it was really dusty. And it is so dusty because there are no roads. So, the, the kind of uh, you know, dust that accumulates and most important, we were in afternoon sessions. So the heat of it in that bus with the tin, uh, you know, having it was something which is still in my memories how, you know, we went on with those uh, particular conditions and brought it. When you walk down to the streets, you know, you can't walk straight because there is extra So you have to, the hip has to keep on. Yeah, so this is how the conditions in which the work went on. In those times. I, I, I hope uh, uh, this uh, Dr. Musha Desai remembers and our DG Bharat uh, had come to inaugurate that particular event. You were also there at one of the And this inspiring words, we have fought the wonderful listeners. So, wonderful listeners, what you could see as a pause that you got, the whisper that you got here is because so many fellow senior rotarians here watching this show at the Bombay Presidency Golf Club when the recording happens, really could cherish the memories of those days when they went out and we could see nostalgia in their eyes, in their voices, and that's exactly here. We, I'm getting goosebumps, Dr. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being such an angel to humanity as all the other audience. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Over to you, Jason. Right? So, uh, Rotarian Jesse, uh, would you like to share one of uh, the projects which is very close to your heart or something that you are very passionate about? in Rodeo. Thank you, Piyush. 
I have had many uh, memorable experiences in uh, Rupi in the last five years. Uh, but one uh, event and one memory which uh, will always stay with me is uh, dates back to somewhere in October 2019. Our club was supporting a project called uh, Touching Little Hearts, where we uh, support the pediatric cardiac surgeries of children who are born with congenital heart defects. These are the children who would otherwise be left to die because uh, the treatment is quite expensive and children from the less privileged families find it very difficult to have access to this treatment. So we have this as quite new in the uh, and as representing our club at the Living Hospital. And uh, Natasha holds the interface between Rotary and the hospital. But we just as a child is waiting to be discharged, would you like to see that child? Of course, why not? And she told me the child was operated when the child was just two hours old. The child had a defect called technology of fallow, which is the child is having at least four to six defects which are life threatening to the other. And when I went there and I held the child in my hand, the child was just two weeks old, not yet named, and the child was completely okay. The child would have been left to die. But imagine the power of hoping that we could save a life. And holding a child who was born into glory, which would have otherwise passed away, and you see the pleasure, the immense joy on the face of the parents. I have no words to describe the joy. And that is how my is always going to be there with me. It has inspired me, and this has now become a flagship project for us. I would also like to share with you all that uh, all the Rupi clubs in Mumbai till date have supported almost 3,200 sur surgeries at an investment of about 32 crores. And anyone who is listening into this podcast, if you'd like to support this cause, would like to strengthen our hands, you are most welcome to join with us. There are many more other memorable uh, such events, but to pick it up a little bit. So, Jason, I've been a wonderful listeners, and I really heard Jason speaking about touching little hearts and about this baby, an unnamed baby, who actually came uh, into the world, uh, which was not supposed to be, and the parent. I could see in him when he was holding his palm, as holding the baby's gentle body, you could see that quiver around that spine, where the baby was really up there, the heart beating, and you could see that life really around in our world. And Jason, when you said what you said, more than your words, I could sense it in an expression as to what that moment was all about. Really, really thank you. I feel fortunate for having seen you while I'm seeing this particular person. Thank you so much. I'm sure podcasters, uh, this is an amazing journey when you're really, really touching hearts. So if you are looking at all of this wonderful rotarians, you would see a lot of medical projects coming up. But these are all wonderful rotarians Rotarians who do multiple projects in terms of international services, vocational, non-medical, medical, uh, international relationships, memberships, and so on and so forth. We are, so these are all Rotarians who do multiple aspects of their role across the years, but I think what's closest to them is when lives are touched and you really get lives changed through lives reborn. That's what you can see this on the show right now. Thank you, Jason, for really. For uh, really, really being so impactful in terms of addressing all of us. I'm sure we look forward to hearing more about the wonderful projects that happens in the Rotary Club of Vietnam. Thank, Thank you, so yeah, much. Over to the one and only. Shanmukha. Oh, beautiful, great. Is really going to use the word Shanmukha Vaidyanathan? Yeah. No, I think you should just say Shan. Yeah. So, uh, let's listen in. Uh, you know, Shanmukha has been waiting since long. And uh, we are eager to listen to him uh, about his experience and his favorite project in uh, the program. So over to you, Sharmukha. Sharmukha? No, abuse. You tried second time. At this time, you to say only one thing. You should say, Hey, Sean, okay. tell about a memorable experience. Hey, Sean, tell about your memorable experience. Uh, there have been quite a few. So the top projects that I am able to think of. Uh, I just need a minute to follow up, you know, what defines the work that we do at Uh Number one, there is a very high degree of focus. Uh, we don't do random acts of charity, we do projects which are due to various avenues of service. So we are either doing community projects towards medical uh, 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 medical uh, service or non-medical service, we do vocational service, international service, youth. So we have a lot of focus, a very, very strong sense of direction, and this is consistent across all the OP clubs in the world. Wonderful. 
Yeah. The second bit is because there is so much of focus, we are able to bring in scale. Rory Red led the world uh, in eradicating polio. We have a few stray cases in Pakistan and probably one more country, but they are less than 10. And that's very well known. Yeah. So, so uh, there are so many stories that all of us can talk to you about uh, when it came to polio pulse program. Uh, of late, we had COVID. In our club, we have a lady we call her COVID experience as a matter of fact. Our, our club, we have, uh, we supported about 20,000 people in and around uh, Chibu, Dilmar, uh, Gowandi area during the COVID uh, period. <coughs> uh, the surgeries that uh, uh, Jaisal and uh, uh, Narendra Kalra and uh, Shankar Chabla mentioned, that again, we are able to bring in very, very, very immense amount of scale. So we, are, uh, we have done about uh, 950 odd corrective surgeries for birds, survivors, we have uh, done about 700-800 odd surgeries for polio uh, patients. Uh, we have got another 100 surgeries coming up for uh, the Little Hearts project. Uh, today, the Rotary Club of Devnath uh, has delivered projects uh, wherein the beneficiaries number a little over a million. Oh, wow. In our 25-26 uh, years of existence. And uh, uh, these go across uh, areas. Apart from medical, there are, uh, there are projects that we have done where we have very good schools. We have uh, resurrected schools, we have uh, uh, modernized schools when it comes to core infrastructure, benches, walls, projectors, computers, uh, uh, digital education. We have done the whole lot. And we do this in uh, on a blueprint basis so that we can replicate it. Yeah. So when we have a student who otherwise wouldn't have got education coming and talking to us, not just in terms of making a speech but using a PowerPoint presentation and talking to us about topics which are very esoteric, we, we feel so proud of ourselves. Awesome. Yeah. Absolutely, Shan. What we saw is go micro, but also get it to make sure that it is really magnified, right? Right. Yeah. Be micro, be micro, be micro, and make sure it is scalable. It really has the magnitude, and you said one million. Uh, people touch, it's like such a bizarre, mind-boggling figure. And that's the extent. And all done to a lot of fun, lot of involvement, right? I need to ask this question when you said about uh, the touching so many lives. Jason, I think, looking at Jason, I think I should ask him that question. Service before self. I mean, uh, when I was a non protein I think self comes first, service comes later. But why would Rotary have this slogan? Of service before self. Any thoughts on this? Very interesting question, uh, Suresh. Uh, it's an iconic global motto, you know, service before self, and a powerful driver for, especially for young minds. If you see the, the, the it's, a, it's a compassion which makes you do what you want to do for society without those I, me, and more of me tags. In Rotary, uh, from, from the Rotary perspective, service before self is where you give a very, very high pedestal for service for the community, towards the community, a very, very high pedestal. We as Romanians bring in our professional skills, our business skills also to serve the community. But the interesting part is that after a period of time, service and self become the same thing. They become mutually inclusive. You, you take the case of, uh, say, Dr. Chalda, who has not missed a single OPD in the last 20 years for especially for the needy. It's not just a single opinion. You take the case of Kulbushin Jitliji or Dr. Usha Desai. They've done immense work for eradication of polio. But even today, you see the spark in their eye when we talk about the project. They're there to support the project in its entirety. You take the case of Kanan. So enthusiastic about our projects in the Rotary Community Corps. So eventually service and self become parts of the same thing. Oh, that's a very interesting perspective. And wonderful, I'm just going to get back to Jason in a moment to complete, to help you complete your words. But uh, wonderful listeners, when you've heard these wonderful words of Jaitley Ji and Usha Ji and Kandan and so many of us, we start to think angels who are watching this show right now. Somebody really inspires us to run the rodeo moment so fondly and affectionately. That's the name which Jason spelled out. We'll meet each one of them through the course of this year on the radio rodeo month on month when we will have interactions with these wonderful rodeos on another episode of the podcast. But for now, I go back to Jason to let him complete what he was trying to say. So yes, indeed, uh, service put it, on, put it on a very high pedestal, 
At the same time, hope it gives you flexibility where you can have a balance between your home, your work, your profession, and also serving the community. Eventually, you have to be serving the community without any any motive because you need you feel the need to give back to this community which has given you so much. Wonderful. We keep each other gently accountable to that mission and oh, yes. thank you, Jason. Yes. Wonderful. Well, yeah. I really lost track of time Piyush, yeah. listening to the service before self and it's part of the same point on both sides. Yeah. But we are still on this track, Suresh. Yes. Uh, Shan, I would like to ask you, would you share with us a specific mission that you pursue in one specific cause in rodeo? Uh, currently, a few uh, rodeos and I, we, we, we work to support uh, the projects inside the club uh, with funding. So that helps us. Uh, you can get CSR funding, perhaps? CSR funding, global grants. So, so there are various. So, so global grants as in uh, Rotary gets global money? Uh, Rotary International has a mechanism uh, through which they provide immense multiplier and we uh, also get the opportunity to collaborate with clubs in other countries from a funding point of view. Oh, I see. So, projects are not necessarily for only the Rotary Club to do collaboration. So, so uh, when we when we look at various proposals, uh, we get to see the sort of value that we are bringing in. Because all said and done, uh, whether we are looking at uh, these projects from standpoint of evaluation or it is the pure joy of doing something that elevates you from you know merely existing to doing something valuable in, in, in the world. So there are there are quite a few projects that that actually fit in that criteria of what you asked, whether it is. Uh, uh, the rehabilitation of uh, burn survivors, whether it is touching little hearts, uh, whether it is uh, enabling a disadvantaged community. We have done uh, a few projects involving transgender. We are trying to do a few projects involving uh, uh, women who are disadvantaged. disadvantaged. Uh, there is actually a project where we are enabling uh, uh, women to get uh, trained, get certified, get that uh, little triangular badge and drive their own autos. Oh. So, you know, the idea is to get them to uh, not fish but uh, uh, learn how to fish. Oh. Yeah, so, so uh, there are several projects that could be a criteria. So, but, but, but almost every project that we do, we do a very careful need analysis, benefit analysis. So, almost everything that we do, apart from the partying that we do, we fit a very strong little project. So, Rotary and Rotary partying, yeah. and I need to see this question which Mr. Kalra said when he started off saying fellowship. Uh, so, parting with the other word for fellowship, I think. I mean, why would fellowship be so important uh, in a Rotary club? Uh, the backbone of Rotary is fellowship. Without fellowship, the main thing is when we come together in a meeting, we could just take chat, sit around, have a first time with each other and discuss about the various projects, various situations where. Ideas come how to do service to the community, what to do for community. Without discussions, without fellowship, we will not be able to do anything. So that is in how important is that we sit across and discuss and by this thing of personal friendship also increases where you are otherwise feeling lonely, where the whole day we are otherwise busy in our own. Offices and uh, works, we don't get time to refresh ourselves, to enlarge ourselves. Fellowship is most important. The other man said, the fellowship is backbone of our tree. Wonderful, what an amazing perspective. So, wonderful listeners, as we tune into humanity, we hear from Mr. Kalga, it says, tune in with fellow humans, that's when you can tune into humanity, right, sir? Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much. Knowing that thing is totally important. I go to this thing when looking at the service before self and uh, the importance of fellowship. I want to ask this to Dr. Shankar Chawla. The question is this when does it strike that it is time to contribute to society? Because everyone will say, I will do it at the right time, right? Time will come. Let me do something in life and I will do it. And is there a right time? When do you get into contributing to society? Thank you. I think. Uh... Giving is something which uh, we all have, and there is no escape for giving. That's an interesting word for escape. 
So whether we are breathing or whether we are doing something. So either if you can give it from your heart, I think it is there. But if you don't give, there will be definitely be loud notes on us. We have to pay the price of that, you know. So the contribution should come voluntarily. And it should come very, very spontaneously. I will just relate to you my experience. When I joined the Notary, I wasn't so well off economically. Let me tell you that. So it was told that uh, I should contribute hundred dollars. So how do I get my hundred dollars? What I did was I thought, how can I save? How can I save so that I can contribute to the Rupi Foundation? So I had a scooter, you know. So the scooter was such that I used my scooter wherever needed for my shopping, for banking, for whatever purpose. And the car was only used as a profession. So one thing which came out was to save a petrol to put that amount for contribution. So that was my initial aspect. Of course, now the things have been different. So, you know, we all have grown in Rotary, grown very well. We became much more skillful and then, you know, the, the money comes as a byproduct now. So, so that was the time that, you know, the contribution value was brought in within us. And that's how, you know, we started. And I still remember our Pitama, he says, you know, if you give one rupee, you will get ten. So I am always greedy, being single, I am always being greedy. <laughs> so I followed him and that's how, you know, this contribution is really very, 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 without contribution, I don't think uh, anything can be you know? And this is very, very important and giving should come with, with it from your heart. So it's the right time to give is now, right sir? Yeah. Is now, and then this is when Dr. Shankar Chandra said Pitama, you have to keep it a suspense. We are going to have the Pitama on the show shortly. So let it remain Pitama, we will disclose who the Pitama is shortly. But do you suggest that what you said? I also uh, relate the fact that apart from me having fellowship and contributing to the Nokri movement, like you said, Nokri also makes us better human beings, right? Better professionals. They teach us so many aspects that requires us to be personally and professionally better version of ourselves, right Doctor? Yes. Thank you so much. That's phenomenal words. I mean I could do I knew one aspect of being a rotarian, but this really opens up a whole new world. I can see our president Sanita Sani nodding and which you can't see wonderful listeners and Alka is saying time is running out. But I'm saying time is not running out. We're really on time, right Piyush? Yeah. So about four minutes to go. We go to the last round. Over to you Piyush. And Piyush wait. It's been so interesting that if you had not really got your acumen and skill and made us go live like this, this would have not have happened. This is a picture for all times. This is a sight for us to remember really. Thank you, Pius, for being that. But it's not a Thanksgiving. I want to give you the question that you're here for us at least for one full year. We need to take care of podcasts for every rotary. Is that a promise on air? Yeah, that's a promise. Thank you, Pius. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so Suresh, uh, do you realize there are Rotarians and there are two be Rotarians who are listening to this podcast? Absolutely. So I would like to ask, uh, start with. Uh, and and there, are, there are also Rotarians to be Rotarians and also families. Rotarians are families. Yeah. Rotarian families also. Absolutely. Okay. No, you know I've read somewhere that uh, in this world there are only two types of Rotarians: A, who are Rotarians, and B. The remaining ones who are going to be Rotarians one day, or, or the family member is going to be Rotarian. So uh, they would definitely have a question and which uh, we would like uh, all of them to answer is we will ask uh, Jai sir, uh, what, what is your message to humanitarians? Like Rotarians and their families also, right? Okay, yeah. Rotarians and families, I mean these are messages which families also need to get. Me. The message to the families is Please keep on supporting the Rotarians. Please keep on supporting your guys at Rotary because they're doing a fantastic job for the community and they're giving back to the community. For the Rotarians who are there, the humanitarians are always servicing. 
service to the community or doing work in the community. Please keep on doing the good work you're doing. Keep on inspiring young guys, young minds like us. And for the potential rubidians, what are you waiting for? Take the plunge. Wonderful. Famous words, Jason. I go on the same question and give it to uh, Rupirin Malva and ask him, sir, any message for Rupirins, to be Rupirins and to the families? Yes, message for Rupirins is just plunge it and do whatever you can do for the society. Then Almighty who definitely will go to take care of you once you take care of the society. Thank you very much. Now uh, I go to Dr. Uh, Smith Chawla. Sorry, sir. Dr. Shankar Chawla and ask him the same question. Any famous messages? And I said famous, I mean, it should really, you know, chumna chahi on to. Message is all right. And rodeos are not just to work for human beings. We are working for animals also. We are also working beyond that. So it is not just human beings. Our club is very actively involved with animals. So, yeah. And also now we are looking for the organisms. All these living organisms and including the earth. I think it's one family. Oh, one wow. family. And what a rodeo is looking at, what the rodeo wants, is harmony, peace, love, and I would say with just few lines, you know. Chal ke tujhe, main le ke chalo, ek aise gagan ke tale, jaha gam bhi na ho, aaso bhi na ho, jas pyaar hi pyaar tale, chal ke tujhe, मैंने so listeners, you know that how many rodeos are there as this first episode of Rodeo Radio is being recorded. And absolutely such a musical tribute and I want to request there's a sister club, a rodeo club of Chaibur, which does the tuning folks of doctors and next to me folks, Dr. Shankar Chala. <laughs> <laughs> first time you sang, you were a singer on the show, live sir, after you sing so well. Touched heart, you touched our real soul. Thank you very much for that wonderful perspective. And over to the shan of the club. How and what is that message that you would like to give? Right, Piyush? What message would you like to give, Piyush? Shan to the families and to the community. Uh, okay. Uh, and you look at home right now, sir. So, any children of the Rutilians, any message for them to be a Rutilian? Uh, okay, um, the first message to uh, the, the potential rotractor because somewhere up, uh, in my head I still consider myself to be more of a rotractor than a rotarian, to be honest. Uh, the sort of life experiences you get, the sort of life lessons that one gets to experience and learn, very, very experiential learning, it's simply boundless in the world of rotary. Okay, uh, uh, as a rotractor, uh, uh, you know, we have been chased by sword wielding mobs when we went to uh, provide vaccinations to, to some of the slum areas here by Nanwai. Because, uh, okay. as a road tractor, we were chased by sword wielding mobs. Yep. Is that, uh, as a charity, may everybody look up to you and say, come, give me charity? No, no, they were somehow indoctrinated that vaccinations will make their children important. So, you know, so they as a road tractor, you had experience that? Oh, yes. Yeah. My goodness. So, so, so you know, I'm not saying that everyone has wonderful experiences <laughs> like that, but that was one of those experiences where you know uh, uh, we went back to that community after educating them that this is for their benefit, and then the same people came and took us around, and we had this extra dose of warmth. So the fact that when you're looking at people not from the lens of a religion or a community, but as human beings, and what they want from life for themselves, for their families, for their children. Okay, and, and, and for their communities and for larger society, you realize that we are not that different after all. 
Yeah, that's a big learning which, which brings a lot of maturity amongst youngsters. As a, uh, for, for uh, one of the Rotarians and potential Rotarians, uh, I'll echo what my uh, co-panelists have said. It's all about, you know, what's the name of Can I do the world, right? No. Yeah, yes, can, can I ask you one follow-up question on that? There are also Rotarians who are sitting on the fence, or those who have not joined Rotarians, but they are sitting on the fence. What is one message that you have for them? Actually, I would have a message more for the administration, saying that, okay, there are Rotarians there, but they are not exactly sitting on the fence, they are still paying dues, they are still attending a few functions here and there, some, some fellowships and so on. Now, we need to provide enough incentive for them to get involved, because if they have joined Rotary, they have joined Rotary to answer to a calling. People don't so join true. under duress. So true. So make sure that we have the avenues for the calling to be consistently Precisely. Uh, uh, emphasized upon. Yeah, thank you, Shan, for your absolutely truly pointed words. Skills absolutely on. We're going to go off air shortly. Absolutely. So I'm going to say this. Uh, I think let me uh, pause for a for a moment and say that as we have the tagline of the show called "Two to Humanity." I could see that we have really plugged in as a rodeo movement into humanity so much that we really have tuned into humanity. The tagline just came off a cuff, but this particular episode really demonstrates that. And it's so important that this movement carries on its being a real honor taking this insight from each one of you and a real honor on behalf of Piyush. And Piyush, I would like to do the honors of thanking each one of them before we go off the air. And as Piyush does that, I would like to thank all our listeners of the show and say that we'll be back next month with another podcast. I will see Mr. G waving over to us. We'll also get some PTS behind the scenes pictures of the podcast, but we will come back month on month with the zeal and the message and the conviction that we have to tune in with humans, with fellow humans so that we can tune into humanity. So see you next episode, next month with another wonderful round of four angels of rodeos in this show called Radio Rodeo and all new views for the Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thank you Dr. Narendra Kandra for sharing your wisdom and experiences. So the CA became a doctor on the show. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you can't be, so many medical projects, yeah. he can't but be a doctor, right? Since you're talking about doctors, let me thank Dr. Shankar Chawla for sharing about n number of projects for years that is Okay, so as we are talking about doctors, let me thank Dr. Shankar Chawla for sharing about n number of projects that is done, the contribution that is done to Rodeo. Absolutely. I over to you, Jason, to receive our thanks. <laughs> so here is uh, the child accountant who basically uh, really, really has gone out of his way to touch little hearts. And we thank you for being on the show and inspiring us with those famous words. Thank you, Dr. Shankar Chawla. Thank you. Uh, CA Karla, I was going to say Dr. Karla, but I connected myself. And uh, thank you, Shan, and probably you could just say thank you on the show and you want to. Yush and Suresh, thank you so much for this very novel concept of tuning uh, into humanity. I think we need to reach out to the community, we need to reach out to the people to, to share our experiences with them, to share what Rotary is all about, give them an insight into Rotary, and provide them an incentive. To strengthen our hands by joining you. Thank you so much for this novel concept. Yep, yeah, with that, we close. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very, very much. Bye bye and see you.